A meeting between President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy to discuss avoiding a debt limit breach failed to produce a deal, but both sides deemed the talks productive. Disagreements persist, particularly on spending cuts and revenue-raising measures. McCarthy ruled out cuts to military spending and rejected a short-term extension of the debt limit deadline. The White House is considering health savings as a potential compromise area. The urgency to reach a deal before the June 1st deadline is growing. The ability to pass a bill in both the Republican-led House and Democratic-controlled Senate quickly remains uncertain. Progressive Democrats have expressed concerns about Biden entertaining GOP demands. While conservative hardliners press for stricter spending cuts. The possibility of using the 14th Amendment to tackle the debt ceiling unilaterally is being considered. Both sides emphasize the need for bipartisan agreement that can be sold to their respective constituencies. Writer E. Jean Carroll has asked a judge to amend her defamation lawsuit against former President Donald Trump to include a new claim after he insulted her during a CNN town hall. Carroll's attorney seeks a substantial punitive damages award for Trump's remarks, made a day after a federal court found him liable for sexually abusing Carroll and defaming her. Trump denied the accusations and called Carroll a whack job. The amended suit requests at least $10 million in compensatory damages and additional punitive damages. Trump's lawyer claims Carroll's amendment reveals her true motivations. The case is currently pending before a judge. Trump has filed an appeal against the $5 million verdict. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, as he prepares to launch his presidential campaign, has adopted a strategic approach when it comes to his interactions with former President Donald Trump. DeSantis aims to avoid engaging in daily Trump taunts and instead focuses on specific policy matters. While some never-Trumpers and Trump skeptics hope DeSantis would confront Trump directly, DeSantis' team believes it is unnecessary and risks alienating their shared supporters. They plan to highlight DeSantis' electability and contrasting record of success, including his decisive re-election victory and his ability to win broad support even in traditionally Democratic areas. The team aims to capitalize on moments when Trump's opposition to DeSantis backfires. DeSantis will need to find a balance in acknowledging Trump's influence without making the primary contest solely about Trump. The opposition party, the National Congress of the Reconstruction of East Timor, CNRT, emerged as the winner in East Timor's parliamentary election. Zanana Gusmao, a prominent independence fighter, is likely to return as prime minister. CNRT secured 41% of the votes and 31 seats, while the ruling Revolutionary Front for an Independent East Timor, Fredlin, received 25% of the votes and 19 seats. The Democratic Party, Kunto Party, and People's Liberation Party also gained seats. East Timor has faced political paralysis and economic challenges since gaining independence from Indonesia. The country continues to battle poverty, unemployment, corruption, and reliance on diminishing offshore oil revenues. Republican Nebraska Governor Jim Pillen has signed a bill that restricts gender-affirming care for young people and bans abortion at 12 weeks of pregnancy. The abortion ban is effective immediately, while the restrictions on transgender health care for individuals under 19 will take effect on October 1. The bill originally focused on prohibiting gender confirmation surgeries for minors but was amended to include the abortion ban. Critics argue that the amendment was added without proper hearings and violated rules about combining unrelated matters into one bill. Supporters of the bill express a desire for even more restrictive abortion measures. New York Republican Congressman George Santos sent thank you notes to fellow Republicans who helped block a vote on his expulsion from Congress. The notes expressed gratitude for referring the vote to the Ethics Committee and emphasized the need for Republican unity. Santos, who is facing federal charges and admitted to lying about his background, highlighted the importance of allowing the proper process to unfold. The resolution to expel Santos was instead referred to the House Committee on Ethics, and it remains uncertain how the committee will proceed.